everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. In today's video, we'll be talking about periodicity and we'll be focusing on the AS level content of period 3 elements. So let's begin. When we talk about periodicity, this word means a gradual change in physical and chemical properties. So we'll be focusing obviously on the physical as well as the chemical properties across this playlist. We'll be talking about what physical and what chemical properties are also. So it's a gradual change. Things change in a way of gradation. And as we just talked about, the properties change through the periodic table. So they could be changing down the group or across the period. By down the group, we obviously mean from top to bottom and across means left to right through a period. So overall the periodic table looks something like this. Let me change it a little. Yeah. And now we have the periods and the groups represented here. From group 1 till group 18 or you can say group 0. We have the periods mentioned like period 1, second period, third period, fourth period and so on. When we focus on some common elements we have group 1 elements starting from lithium and ending on francium. Hydrogen is not technically a part of the periodic table in group 1. In group 2 we have beryllium, magnesium, calcium. In group number 3 we have boron and aluminium. In group 4 we have carbon, silicon, then nitrogen, phosphorus in 15, oxygen and sulfur in 16, all the halogens in group 17 and in group 18, or you can say group 0, we have all the noble gases. Now, coming back to the overall outlook of the periodic table, we know that we are going to be focusing on the period 3 elements from sodium till organ. We know that sodium, magnesium, and aluminium are metals, and we know that silicon, phosphorus, Sulfur, chlorine, and argon are non-metals. Now let's talk about the trends across the period. We should know how to explain or answer whenever we are going to explain any physical or chemical properties. We'll be using the words metals or non-metals, but overall our explanation is going to revolve around these two terms. Metals are on the left side of the periodic table, while non-metals are on the right side of the periodic table. For example, starting from sodium and ending on argon with an atomic number of 18, as we move from left to right, there is an increase in nuclear charge. And by nuclear charge, I obviously mean the number of protons inside the nucleus. So due to an increase in the proton number or the nuclear charge, there is more nuclear pull. And this nuclear pull will affect the physical and the chemical properties. What are physical properties that we'll be studying? So physical properties are the ones which include melting point, boiling point, etc. So we'll be talking definitely about the melting and boiling point. We'll be referring to density for sure. And in chemical properties, we'll be talking about reaction with water or steam, acids and bases and oxygen. So coming back to the periodic table and period three, let's talk a little about the melting point. Whenever we want to explain the melting point, we should be focusing on the structure and bonding. So for the first three elements, sodium is a metal with metallic lattice. Sodium forms a metallic lattice where all the atoms lose their valence electron or you can say the outermost electron and become cations. So there is a positive charge on individual cation and each cation is made by losing an electron. The electron makes a mobile sea of electron around the lattice of the positively charged ions. Magnesium does a similar thing but magnesium ions are smaller. We will see very shortly why magnesium ions are smaller. Also, 
Magnesium forms a charge of plus 2. So each individual cation has a charge of plus 2 and it's formed by losing 2 electrons each. So there are overall more electrons in the metallic lattice of magnesium than sodium. So magnesium has ions with a charge of plus 2 and there are more electrons in the mobile C. Aluminium is formed by ions of positive 3 charge because each individual aluminium atom loses 3 electrons. So there are overall more electrons in the lattice of aluminium even more than magnesium. Each individual ion has a charge of plus 3 and it has lost more electrons. So aluminium has more electrons in the overall lattice and that is why even aluminium has a higher conductivity because there are more electrons in the mobile C. So the charges of the cations of sodium are bigger. So larger cation and overall fewer electrons in the mobile C. That is why sodium has metallic bonding but it's weaker compared to magnesium and aluminium because lesser electrons in the mobile C. Magnesium has smaller cations which means a good charge density and overall more electrons in the mobile C. So more electrons are available to perform electrostatic attractions. When we talk about aluminium, there are even more smaller cations compared to the other two. Also, aluminium has more electrons than the other two. So more electrons available to perform the electrostatic attraction. That is why aluminium has the strongest metallic bonding and even the highest electrical conductivity because more electrons in the mobile C. So it has the strongest electrostatic attractive forces in the metallic lattice. Stronger than sodium and stronger than magnesium both. And that is why aluminium has the highest melting point while sodium has the lowest. Sodium has a melting point of across 97 degrees Celsius. So across the metals, aluminium has the strongest metallic lattice and the strongest attraction. We can see the melting points also. 97 degrees for sodium, 650 degrees Celsius for magnesium and 660 degrees Celsius for aluminium. Now, when we talk about silicon, Silicon is not a metal. Silicon is a non-metal. But silicon has a giant covalent structure. Imagine an atom of silicon with four electrons in the last shell. They can form a tetrahedral structure. And silicon atoms continue to bond with each other to form a highly regular giant covalent lattice with a large number of covalent bonds and so many atoms bonded together. So that is why silicon has very high melting point. Large number of atoms making many strong covalent bonds with each other and that is why a lot of heat is required to break these covalent bonds, which is not easy. So silicon has the highest melting point among the entire period three. So let's write so, very, so high heat needed to break the bonds. It's not electrostatic attraction, it's covalent bonds. Coming back on the last three or last four, you can say, non-metals from phosphorus to argon. All of these are non-metals. Phosphorus makes a molecule with P4, which means there are four atoms bonded together by covalent bonds. It has got simple covalent structure. Sulfur makes molecules with S8, with 8 sulfur atoms in individual molecule, while chlorine makes a Cl2 molecule, P4, S8 and Cl2. Now since they are simple covalent structures, they are going to have intermolecular forces which are very weak. So overall here we have sulfur has most atoms in one molecule, Phosphorus has fewer atoms in one molecule and chlorine has the least number of atoms per unit molecule. So when we focus on intermolecular forces, they depend 
on the overall number of atoms and total electrons. We can also call these forces London dispersion forces or you can say ID ID forces. Please watch my video on IMFs so you would know how they are created. As it has the strongest IMFs among these three, phosphorus has a little weaker and chlorine has the weakest IMFs. So sulfur has the highest melting point among the three, phosphorus has a little lower and chlorine has the least. High melting point than phosphorus and chlorine, phosphorus has higher melting point than obviously chlorine while chlorine has the least melting point among the three. Coming back to a graphical study, let's put the atomic number on the x-axis and the melting point in degree Celsius on the y-axis. From 11 till 18, we can notice that sodium, magnesium and aluminium have high melting points. Silicon has the highest, while all the non-metals have very low melting points. We know that the three metals have metallic lattice with electrostatic attraction. We know that silicon has a giant covalent structure with many strong covalent bonds, while the rest of them have weak intermolecular forces. And those are also called as London dispersion forces. In the next video, we'll continue with the periodic trends. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks.